Welcome to the 19th video on building a social network. We already did the back end in Go, now we are with the front end. Last time we made this login page. I updated it and added user registration. Here you can see it. When we catch the user not found error, I run this registration program. I simply prompt for a username and do the request to the back end. In this video we will complete the home page. First, I want to show a form to create posts. and a list to display all the timeline items. Also, a button for pagination. That is it. Let me add some styles. That's enough. Now I'm gonna get all these HTML elements to add the functionality. Okay. First, I will need to fetch the timeline from the back end. Now, I can call this function at the start. I will iterate each timeline item, create the DOM and append it to the list. This render post will have its own file. But first, let me write some type definitions. That's it. Now we can continue creating this function to render a post. I want to render the user with its avatar at the top, a timestamp, the post content in the middle, and some controls at the bottom, like the like button. You know, like a tweet.
The avatar will be its own component. The avatar URL can be null, but I still want to show something. I will display a circle with the user initial on it. That's it. CSS will do the rest. For the post content, we need to escape HTML from here. Let me get the snippet from Stack Overflow or something. Here. Down below, I will show a like button and the comments count. And that should be it. Ugly. So let's add some CSS. For the avatar, I will display the initial with the data attribute we added. Nice. For the like button, I will use an emoji as icon. Same for the comments count. I think that's enough. Let's do the post form submission.
I like to disable form controls while I'm doing request. I enable them once the requests finish. The back end didn't include the post user once created. So I will add it here. After the post is created, I add the post at the top of the list. And reset the form. For the errors I don't do anything fancy. That seems okay. Let's try it. Whoops. There. Now it works fine. Let's move into the load more button. For the pagination, I use the ID of the last timeline item. Once we get more results, I append them to the list. Let's test it by creating more posts. Very nice. Now, let's make the timeline real-time. I will use an event source connection. Here, I cannot set request headers. So I will add the auth token to the URL query string. And I will parse the event data as JSON. Finally, I return a function to close the connection. I want to make sure the subscription is closed once I leave the home page, so I will use the disconnect event. When a new timeline item arrives, I add it to the top of the list. 
Okay, this disconnect event doesn't exist yet. I will dispatch it manually when we render another page. That's it. I will add a log for you to see. There. Now, to test the real-time timeline, I will log in as Jane in another tab. But first, I need to make John and Jane follow each other. OK. And it works. I want to center that load more button. Better. And some spacing after the form. Yeah, now it looks great. And that's the end of this video. I will fix some UX things off screen and I will see you in the next video. Bye.